everyone. It is another episode of The Good Work Show, and uh, we're back with more um, thrifting and shopping related content today. So um, so yeah, it, I think it's going to be a good one. Yeah, and we've talked a lot of fashion, I think, and this time we're kind of going to dig into your house and give some folks ideas and tips for um kind of the back half of all of our stores, you know, that whole home decor, housewares section, things that you can find back there to kind of supplement your surround. I personally find that part of our stores easier to shop, but that's just because that's my interest. Mm -hmm. So like, rarely do I go in looking for clothes, but I can always go in there and find like a really cool candle holder or picture frames or mirror you know stuff like that like I that stuff is sprinkled all over my house yeah well it's gonna be good to talk to Virginia Shambly who is a longtime thrift shopper but um she also wrote a book called Big Thrift Energy where she is giving tips and tricks and information about how to shop thrift and so we've partnered with her recently uh, to to do some collaborations at the home show and looking forward to doing more things with her because she's an expert in the field. And so uh, so she can give some information that that maybe even could educate us on on how to shop and, of course, educate you all as listeners. So we're excited to bring her on and hear what she has to say and maybe get her to share some of her top finds or tips with us as we do this interview. So Stay tuned for more and uh, let's hear from Virginia. Hello everyone and welcome back. So we are now being joined by our guest who has become a good friend of Goodwill's. Uh, so we're thankful for that. We've got Virginia Chambly who's joining us and she is, I don't, I, I guess I'm going to call you a thrifting expert for sure. Yeah. Um, Cause once you've written a book about something, you're, you're an expert. <laughs> I, I just feel like, you know, so you get to be called an expert, but also uh, an interior design expert. Is, am I like, am I, am I hitting on that or am I like stretching? But I, I saw some of the video of what you produced for um, the recent Atlanta home show and uh, where you set up some things. Uh, that came from our stores so that people could understand what you could thrift there. So that's why she's a, one of the reasons why she's a friend of ours, but she loves to thrift. So, um, so Virginia, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I love Goodwill. Absolutely. Well, well, we love you. So we, but we've got to know what you love about Goodwill and, um, and what you love about thrifting, because you said you, you you've written a book about it. So we'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, tell us about thrifting and why you do it and and what you find and what you actually thrift for, because I know some people come from different, for different things when they shop at Goodwill. So tell us all about your strategy and, um, and your mission when you're, sh- when you're thrift shopping. So thrifting for me is something I got into at a really young age. I used to go thrifting a lot with my grandmother. She raised me. So she was like my mom and she was a single mom and I was the only child. So we did everything together. And, um, it, it, you know, it was something she was always really good at finding these incredible treasures. So when I got older and I got an apartment and later my first home, I would go to the thrift store to find these really cool pieces. And, um, I started selling my finds probably seven years ago. And really it was just a way to offload excess stuff. I think when you start thrifting a lot, you end up maybe buying too much stuff, (laughs) which is something I think I've gotten better at in recent years. But um, I think that's when I really realized when I started selling, I realized how the pieces I was finding weren't just resonating with me, but were resonating with this wider audience, right? Like I was getting some A-list celebrities who were buying things that I found at Goodwills, for instance, and some big name interior designers. So it just sort of showed me that these homes that you see in Architectural Digest and El Decor, I mean, some of that stuff you see that looks so incredible is probably actually thrifted or vintage and, and shopping at places like Goodwill is such a great way to find those things. And 
I think a lot of us think as think of vintage as old stuff, but because everything that we see now is kind of rooted in what's been done before, shopping in places like Goodwill is actually a really great way to shop for trends and sort of get that of the moment look. So that's why I got into it. And then I, I wrote my book, uh, which came out in July, because I was getting so many questions from people like, how do you know how to thrift? You know, as you all know, Goodwills and other thrift stores get so many donations, um, which is one of my favorite things about Goodwill. I know that you all put donations out on the floor every single day of the week. So that means you should go as often as you can <laughs> to as many stores as you can. Um, but because of all that merchandise, people don't always know how to sort of navigate it and, and how to determine what's, you know, a quality piece and maybe what's not um, or how to sort of style it in their own home. So I wanted to answer all of those questions with the book. That's wow. great. And I so what is the, okay, so I know like with clothing, is 20 years the definition of vintage? Is it 20 years? It does it have to be 20 years old to be considered actual vintage? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then antiques is like 100. Okay. Because, you know, we think about, I love that you, that, because I, I, you know, you go to the thrift store and people do find things. Oh, I, I found this and it's thrifted. But mm -hmm. then if you just say, oh, but it's vintage, then that's a whole different, <laughs> right? then all of a sudden it's elevated and it's, you know, different and, and fancy. And I do think that that's something, especially when it comes to like home decor stuff, because that's stuff that people do hold on for a long time. And if they're cleaning out you know, grandma's house or you're cleaning out, I mean, I have my dining room table, I didn't thrift it. It was kind of left when I bought my condo, but it's this beautiful mid-century, like truly mid-century, like the person who bought it, bought it mid-century table. But, you know, that's something, but if she had not left it in the condo, it probably would have been at the Sandy Springs Goodwill and right. somebody could have gotten that, you know, really great table. So there are a lot of opportunities out there. So tell us, actually, I'd like to know a couple of tips. What are some of those tips that are in your book? You don't have to give it all away because we want people to buy the book, but, <laughs> you know, give us a couple of those tips on how to know, you know, if you're finding something quality or so that you end up with like the happy face, if you ever end up on Antiques Roadshow, as opposed yeah. to uh, <laughs> that face. Yeah. So I think one of my biggest tips is to really examine the item and check for marks. Um, you hear the phrase maker's mark a lot, and sometimes you can actually find the brand name. If it's a piece of furniture, you can lift up the cushions. If it's upholstered, you can check the back of the piece, check inside the drawers. It's typically easier with the smaller pieces like pottery or ceramics or like a small sculpture to, to look for a signature. And it might not even be an artist's signature. Even some of these like really high-end designer pieces don't have an artist or brand name, but they might have a location. So one really great example, I got an incredible Batazzi vase. Batazzi is a very, very um, high-end mid-century brand. It's a family uh, that's been in Italy for decades and they have this one specific color, it's called Rimini Blue, and that's kind of what the collectors always want to find. Anyway, I found this vase at the Goodwill um, on Buford Highway, and it doesn't say Batazzi on it. I know what it is because I was familiar with the brand already, but it says Italy underneath, and it's it looks like it's written in Sharpie, but you know, it's, it's probably paint. Um, and so I always tell people, look for, even if you can't find like the artist name, look for words like Italy or Portugal or Mexico. These are all places where a lot of artisans make things like pottery or uh, Portugal, for instance, is like a really great place to find cabbage ware, you know, those old plates that look like cabbage and, and lettuce, and those are super collectible. So I think if you can look for marks, that's a really great way to determine something's value or just to determine if it's made by an artist. It doesn't even have to be a famous artist, right? A lot of the stuff I buy, for instance, is probably made by like an art student, but I know that it's one of a kind and that makes it valuable and important to me because, you know, I know I'll never see this piece anywhere else. Another thing to do is just kind of to, to pick something up and to see if it's heavy and well-made and to get an idea of the material. So there are certain materials that are just more expensive. And so if something's made out of one of those materials, like marble or brass or lucite, 
then you know that it's probably a nicer item and it will probably last. Like your table, for instance, is probably, you know, a nice quality wood is, is my guess. And, and that means it's probably well constructed and it will last for, for decades or however long you want to keep it. Um, and then because Goodwill gets stuff in every single day, go often, go to as many stores as you can. And I always tell people to look everywhere because I know that because of all of those donations that the stores are getting, the staff and the volunteers don't always have time to merchandise everything, right? It's not like a West Elm where everything's laid out perfectly. Sometimes paintings are stacked against a wall behind clothes. And I know at the many of the Florida stores, they will put merchandise down the center of the aisles, like on top of where the clothing is, you know, some smaller sculptures and lamps and paintings. I know some thrift stores even hang art in the bathrooms and it'll be for sale, but you know, you have to go in the bathrooms to kind of find it. So um, yeah, I think those are, those are some of my biggest tips. So, um, so I love the, the last one about come often uh, <laughs> because, yeah. of, because of course we work at Goodwill. So uh, we would be remiss if we didn't, if we didn't think that was good, but, um, but you've given some really, really great advice. So, okay. So I have to ask, what's your favorite find? Is that based the, the, like you brag on all the time? Oh, I found this at Goodwill. So is that it? Or do you have another? Yeah, I have my biggest one is I have this Goyard trunk, which Goyard is very similar to Louis Vuitton, but it's a little more rare. Um, they still don't even have an online presence. And I got this trunk at a thrift store for $95. Um, and those trunks start at like $10,000. Some wow. of them are a hundred thousand dollars. So that's definitely, um, that's a big one. And that, you know, I found that by looking everywhere, I went into a thrift store. It was kind of a mom and pop thrift store that sadly doesn't exist. I know people are going to ask me what, what thrift store did you go to? <laughs> okay. But, um, the shopkeeper, I was on my way out and she said, you know, make sure you look at the shed out back. And there was kind of a little shed out back behind the store. And that's where the trunk was. And, so, you know, I think it's it's really important to go often, but also to look in sort of every nook and cranny. Yeah. I do wow. think that that's interesting that you said that because I know I've found, I still think the best thing I found, I found a Cartier necklace. Not oh a my Cartier. God. No, it wasn't Cartier. It was um, Givenchy necklace. Oh, great. In one of our stores. And I, it's interesting if you know, like you were saying, even about the pottery and that kind of stuff, if you know your brands, because right. there's the well-known brands, you know, you're always going to be mm. able to find a coach bag or, right. you know, even a Louis Vuitton bag because they're so well-known. But then if you start thinking about those brands that are even a little bit more exclusive that yeah. don't have as much um, branding right on the stuff, you know, whether it's clothing or a bag or home decor, that kind of stuff. I do think that that's the sweet spot sometimes with it totally um, is. You're so thrift right. stores because everyone may not, you know, when you said that, I was like, oh my God, that, you know, you found that, but if you're unfamiliar, then you may miss out on that. So tell us where people can go to follow you for your tips and your finds and find out where they can get the book so that they can be encouraged. Cause now I feel like, I'm like, do I need to go to Goodwill today? Like, I <laughs> yes, <laughs> the answer is always yes. Do I need to go to a store today? I feel inspired. Where can people um, find out more information about um, what you do and um, the tips and tricks that you have? So I'm most active on Instagram of all the social media platforms. And I'm at V Shamley, V-C-H-A-M-L-E-E. -E. And my book, Big Thrift Energy, is available on Amazon, Target, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million. I know lots of indie retailers have it as well. Awesome. Well, we're excited um, that you have chosen to partner with us. We look forward to doing more things together. And um, everybody support. Get the book so you can get all the tips. Um and follow Virginia on social media. Uh, do you have a picture of the trunk on on your social? Oh yeah, I've got. Okay, so I've see, got if you want to see the trunk, you got to go to her <laughs> social media so that you can see that. But follow her, um, and we're just excited to to work together. I think this is a a great opportunity to tap into your expertise so that you can share with folks who may not necessarily know all of the ins and outs and what they can find at Goodwill, you can bring that information to them. So thanks so much for doing that and uh, for supporting Goodwill in our mission. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Stay tuned.
tuned for a recap of this episode.